After years of hesitation, network operators, the infrastructure investment community, and even governments are finally ploughing billions into high-speed fibre access network rollouts. But what will the outcome be for telcos, users and capex budget holders? Well, to find out, I'm talking today with Björn Capens, VP of Fixed Networks Europe at Nokia. So welcome, Björn. Great to talk with you today. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, so there's been a great deal of activity in recent years around fibre to the home or FTTH, as it's known thanks to significant investments by telecom operators and others in the fibre broadband community. But can this momentum be maintained or is this going to be a short-lived telco industry phenomenon? Yeah, interesting uh, question, of course, Ray. Uh, well, my, my view on that is very firm. Uh, the momentum for fibre to the home is absolutely not over yet. And in fact, if you listen to what analysts are telling, uh, iDate is publishing regularly a report which they call the the World FTTX Market Report. And what they're predicting is that by 2025, uh, another 200 million fiber users are going to get connected. And that's a global figure, uh, excluding China though. In the same period of time, they speak about another 280 million of homes passed uh, to be added. And those are very impressive numbers. And if I then look at Europe, which is the market I know better, uh, let's be honest, in terms of fiber to the home coverage, we're barely halfway. I've been saying this at many occasions, but human impatience will continue to drive the need for speed and consequently the need for fiber. Now, while you're laying out a fiber infrastructure um, in the first place to address as many households as possible, in fact, that very same fiber will uh, run by every street, every building, and it is relatively easy to not only connect the homes at that point in time, but to also connect uh, business customers, commercial campuses, schools, hospitals, whatnot. So even if a fiber network or a pond network more particularly is going to be built in the first place to address the residential market, operators do very well realize that the power of that fiber network goes beyond the FTTH uh, use case. Huh? In fact, they want to use that fiber for everything. Uh, as an example, uh, Orange, the, 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 the well-known uh, operator, is modernizing the IT infrastructure of their own offices, including their headquarters location, by deploying uh, optical LAN technology. And one of our uh, customers in the UK, uh, City Fiber, has actually recent express, uh, recently expressed their ambition to use their fiber network not only to offer a multi-gig residential service for their wholesale uh, customers, but to also offer high bandwidth services, for instance, to connect enterprises or to provide backhaul uh, for mobile networks. So uh, what do you think is driving this shift in thinking uh, beyond residential? In fact, I, I, I view three steps in, in the thinking of, of the market. Um, and, and let me briefly explain. First of all, I'd say fiber is forever. Uh, once uh, fiber infrastructure has been laid out, the continuous technology evolution will ensure that with every new generation of pond technology, higher speeds will be offered than the previous one. So massive capacity will be there always. The greenest possible capacity, moreover, because if it comes to uh, comparing the power consumption per, per bit or per gigabit, uh, nothing will beat upon network. In addition, the industry is evolving towards the introduction of software-defined access networks, or SDAN. And SDAN will exactly allow uh, slices to be taken uh, and, and result of fiber capacity and on top of that also adds programmability to the network. So not only will there be fiber networks with massive capacity to address all these use cases, it also comes with an SDAN toolkit that will allow to segregate traffic flows and to offer the right level of experience uh, to all of these use cases. So the second step in the process is when we are going to use FTTH networks beyond residential and we're going to really offer a service of fiber uh, for everything, Instead of doing parallel networks for that, we're, we're going to achieve an obvious cost saving. And the effect is in fact double. Uh, first of all, the total cost of ownership of business services or mobile transport is going to dramatically reduce by leveraging pond networks, as opposed to using the more costly and the less green point-to-point -point alternatives. But secondly, the business case of that initial fiber rollout will at that point in time also be strengthened. Uh, 
uh, simply because you're adding more services and therefore more users. And that automatically leads to step three, uh, because when the business case for fiber deployment becomes more appealing, it will automatically attract more uh, and new players to the business. And that's exactly what we observe in the market today. We see both private and public money circulate and every player has its own goal. Uh, incumbents and competitive CSPs, for instance, they use fiber to win the battle for the home. Investment funds, they look at the, the future proof, let's say, um, worth or value of, of fiber and thereafter the long-term returns. And then governmental funds, they typically stimulate economy, education and many, many more things uh, that are sometimes also more tactical. But long story short, everyone is building fiber networks these days. Uh, we can give some examples. In, in UK, open reaches, but so are dozens of altnets. In Italy, we have open fiber alongside the Telecom Italia Mobile and others. In Germany, we have players like uh, Deutsche Glasfaser or Telefonica's UGG or Vodafone and, and many, many more who actually deploy fiber networks for multiple purposes. Yes, yeah, so just an incredible amount of activity and the, the economics are really compelling. Uh, but as we know, fiber to the home rollouts are capital intensive and are not the only area of focus for telco budget holders right now. So where should network operators prioritize their spending? Should it be on the fiber broadband rollouts or on 5G? Very, very good question. Uh, and you might guess my answer. I, I, I think operators really should invest in both. In fact, I've, I've always considered that wireless and wireline access technologies are very complementary in the access. Huh? Um, and sure, th there are mobile use cases that do require radio networks and radio speeds, very much like pond speeds, they will continue to increase. But I only need to look at my, my two teen kids at home to realize that Wi-Fi remains extremely important in, in that equation. And so a good portion of traffic that comes from phones or tablets and, and laptops and what else is actually going to end up in that fiber access network. Because simply said, there's not going to be 5G without powerful Wi-Fi offload. And there's not going to be powerful Wi-Fi without fiber. And then secondly, um, let's not forget about fixed wireless access. Uh, because no matter if we have the determination to deploy fiber across the, the globe, there will always be places where the business case for fiber to the home is difficult or doesn't work at all, or where it will simply take too much time to, to, to bring the fiber. And in that particular case, uh, fixed wireless access is probably a very good alternative to consider for operators who want to bring gigabit speeds early enough to market uh, as to acquire new customers or adversely uh, avoid losing existing customers. And in fact, a recent example I can uh, refer to is um, Nokia uh, partnering with Telia in, in the Nordics uh, in building a 5G standalone uh, mobile network. And we do apply network slicing there with the exact purpose uh, to enable that use case of fixed wireless access. Yeah, a great deal of uh, alternatives there for network operators. Uh, and at the end of the day, of course, it's all, all about providing great service to the end user and customers. So uh, Björn, great to talk with you today. Thanks very much for joining us and telling us about what's going on in the broadband network market. Thanks very much.